Hi slash x slash. I was wondering if any of you have been security guards. I myself do the odd job occasionally and have some spooky stories to tell. If anyone would like to share their own that would be great. Get security contract to assist rangers in a deep forest. Shift is 6 p.m. to 5 a.m. Pay is shit, but no interaction with normies so doesn't bother me. Get to drive a company car and essentially get the whole forest to myself. Camping was forbidden at this forest. Job said to just report if you see any suspicious persons on site. Cameras are positioned at some parts of the forest but would not be able to see any trespassers until notified by surveillance. Don't question it and drive in circles for a few hours. No phone reception so can't shit post on 4chan. Was pissing down by 8 p.m. So visibility was essentially down to about 5 meter ease. Middle of summer so it was heavy jungle type rain that caused a lot of mist. About 2 a.m. Miss trolling it like a motherfucker and can't see shit. For some reason I don't seem to give a fuck about it and keep driving. Start to see shiny eyes dotted on the sides of the road, would catch the headlight of my car, but looked really low to ground. Pull over because I want to see what the fuck it is. Starts to move in the middle of the road. Holy fuck JPG. Start to realize I'm a fucking idiot and my car is a lot further away than I realized. Doesn't move for middle of road. Run back to my car and lock doors. Still there. Happening.jpg. Put on high beam lights and slowly roll forward towards the eyes. Looks like a small goblin sized creature. Realize it's actually a fucking huge owl with its head crooked and turned towards me. Nope.jpg drive around it and haul ass. See more pairs of eyes on the road as I drive past. Crying in my car. Get to the entrance of the forest and calm myself down. Rest of shift was okay. Damn you should have tried to speak to it, could have been a god. Bump for interest. Also, where are you from? Australia. I heard from an aboriginal ranger that owls are used to communicate with elders as a part their religious belief known as Dreamtime. Security and non here thinking about it the road wasn't far off an aboriginal engraving site. Kind of spooked now. Why the fuck does this happen to me? Okay I got another. Keeping eye on office building. Late night shift again. 10 pm to 6 am on a Saturday. No friends so don't care and again avoid normies at normal hours. Watching the cameras to see if there's any slash x slash worthy ghosts floating around. Nothing as usual. There are some staff still on site in the late evening, around midnight the last one will leave the office. Observe woman in one of the hallway cameras. Acts like she is being followed, just like Elisa Lamb did in the elevator, same mannerism and everything. Get spooked seeing this and decide to investigate in person because inner sense of responsibility tells me to do it, I think it's a beta cope. Before I leave I observe a good 30 seconds of this woman running around like she's a secret spy agent or some shit, peering over corners and running fast as fuck for no reason. Reconsider going in but say fuck it and go to the location. Spot her and ask her how's the night going, trying to gauge her response. Says all is good and walks off normally, but was unnatural in the response she gave, like she was panicked. Thinking I fucked up somehow, but realized maybe she was just bored or I'm spurging out. I guess she was role-playing or some shit, but it was a little weird, there was no one messing with her. Maybe she knew I would observe that but was kind of weird for me. I've had a lot of time in the security world, and my favorite gig was an armed patrol security company I used to work for. We would primarily run security for Section 8 complexes. I was officer in charge of this in a major US city. The adrenaline rushes are addicting. So these Section 8 complexes get pretty ominous at night. The freedom of patrol is being able to respond to calls and really stretch your legs during a shift. If one area was calm you could head out to an area that needed you. Around 2 AM. Patrolling in complex comprised of multiple 3 to 4 story buildings. Place was so bad we would roll gun in hand sometimes. Roll around to rear of this building. Notice one of the boards of a dilapidated building is ajar. We would clear these buildings for vagrants and other illegal activities. Get out of patrol car look around the area. It's dead quiet. Figure I'll clear the building something to do. Once I get inside I look around. The regular once occupied dwellings have signs of a previous life. Always wonder who lived inside, what decisions in their life lead them here, and what exactly happened that caused their building to be taken over by gangs and them forcefully moved out. I would always find the odd legal letter here and there, the odd children's drawing of their family or the sign and flowers. Round the corner of one unit and I find something interesting, I find a hole. I figure I can get through there pretty easy and I'm curious on what's the other side. I'm getting drywall all over myself. Inhaling the good ol' asbestos. 
I'm now a dog on the hunt. I find a series of holes, one leading to the next. This building is pretty big mind you had to have maybe 50 units inside. Honestly having fun in this get a labyrinth, still going deeper into the abyss. You would find constant graffiti around. Sometimes it was a menu of services in the area. Sometimes it was a child just screwing around. Figure I had to be getting closer to the end. Shouldn't be that many units left. I would always stop and read what I come across, sometimes it was intel but I would always think of myself as a ghetto archaeologist of sorts and absorb everything I could. Finally reached the end of this whole journey. The end has a bigger room attached to a smaller one to the side. Clearly this is the sin room, find a bunch of smashed phones in one corner, trash littered about. Signs of people that were in this room not too long ago. Then I start to find a lot of bullet casings about the area, made sure to document one. See the last room I haven't looked into yet. Go into the last room and that's when I see it. The danger zone bone. Make sure to take a pic when I realize. Deep in a labyrinth that no one knows I'm in. Radio is out of signal range. I have no backup. I see a bunch of shit in front of me. I think that's blood on the mattress. When I go in for a closer look I hear a series of footsteps in front of me. Immediately know I'm deep behind jogger lines and I need to get the fuck out of there. I'm not a cop I don't give a shit what happened here I need to get out of here. Book it out of the holes get back in my car. Light a ciggy and hit the road to calm my nerves. Now I'm not sure if this was an execution site or just a bitch that was on a period or something. I don't know. I just know I didn't want to stick around and find out. This place had murders at least every month, it was honestly the worst I've ever been to. It's now been demolished but I find myself thinking about the ghetto maze from now and then wondering what true stories happen there. I have one to share, it's not spooky as much as unsettling. Be me 22 year old security guard on their last shift. Been working this job since I left the Air Force. Finally getting around to going to college so getting a new job in the campus library. I basically work a gate guard for some snobby rich neighborhood. Place is honestly the worst, people scam literally everyone they can. 75% of my job is turning away pizza guys who are given bad checks or letting cops in to serve court orders. Last part of my shift, my replacement was supposed to be here at 12 am but it's now 12.30. Fuck you Kyle. Gray Nissan pulls up to my gate. God damn it I just wanna leave. Instantly feel like something is off. Woman is sweating profusely, and extremely jumpy. Keep stucking low or glaring when the occasional cars pass us. Just residents coming home. Ask her if she's okay. She says she's being followed by someone who raped her. Immediately tense up, and go into high alert. Ask her if they're close, start looking for anyone or any cars loitering around. She claims the car that just passed us was the rapist. Before I can say anything says he's coming back. It's a totally different car. She says another car is following her. Start to realize she was on something. Maybe you should call the police ma'am. They're all in on it. This is before I knew what gang stalking was. This carries on for a while, as she keeps indicating car after car is a pursuer. She claims when they stop at a stop sign that's them passing off their stalking duties to the next car. Finally her boyfriend shows up. Fucker walks out of the bushes on the neighborhood side. Scares the fuck out of me. He starts trying to calm her down. Gives me this slow I already know nod before I say anything. Eventually he's able to get into her car and they drive away. Other guard shows up as my asshole begins to relax. Tell him about it and go home. Next day I get to work to find my boss and a sheriff waiting. They ask me about last night. I answer everything and show them the report I made of the thing. I find out that the boyfriend was stabbed multiple times and was currently in the ICU. Bitch was still on the loose. I finish giving my statements, turn in my uniform shake my boss's hand and go home. Officially no longer my problem. I still think about it occasionally, no idea if that guy died or if they caught that girl. Or even if she was on slash off something. Like I said nothing spooky like skinwalkers or anything but unsettling. I truly believe if I let her out of the car she would have attacked me. So I guess I'm just lucky. Did you lose your job? No that was my last shift. I was already coming in to hand in my uniforms and a few other company items the next day. My boss did text me however telling me to get my ass there ASAP since the sheriff wanted to speak to me. I don't think I would have lost my job, I didn't do anything wrong and my report matched the CCTV recordings. Not exactly security, but I work in shipping. This happened 5 years ago, but it boggles my mind to this day. Be me. Have watch on bridge together with one AB very young man. 
but responsible and competent. Nothing happens. Boring shit you always get in the Biscay Bay. Everything's well. Ab tells me he sees another ship. Look up from console and onto radar, check AIS and comms. Nothing. I assume it could be a small pleasure craft. Strange, but not entirely unlikely. Take binoculars and ask him to show me. Both of us look where he spotted the ship for a few minutes but find nothing. Tell him his mind probably connected some shapes and it's nothing. Ten minutes later he sees it again. Get kinda rude but check anyway. Nothing, assume he is just over enthusiastic. Ask him to describe the ship. He describes a huge ship with a tall superstructure and actual turrets. Ask him if he consumed alcohol or other drugs, because battleships are not used anymore and Hess an idiot. Hear a ship's horn. Run to comms because I thought I fucked up and there is a ship nearby. Nothing on any system. Ab tells me to look port side. A fucking battleship goes past us without even disturbing the water. Maybe 50 meters away from us. Ask chief engineer to come up and look right. He sees it too. MFW he only tells us to not look at it directly. My face when he only tells us to not look at it directly. What? This fucker knows more. Is he still alive? Can you ask him or talk to him about it? He is very much alive and employed, but I don't know on what vessel or his contact, since the crewing agency doesn't tell us because EU data protection nonsense. However, we obviously asked him afterwards what the fuck we saw and why we shouldn't look at it. He only responded very defensively and didn't really tell us anything of any substance except that it's not an uncommon sight and that these ghost ships would bring bad luck if you looked at them too long. But otherwise are supposedly harmless. On other occasions, before we saw the ship, he also told of more ridiculous shit, which nobody really believed. But after what happened I am more inclined to believe him. The things he also talked about and take that with a grain of salt because I think he was also just messing with the never guys, include weird stuff like sirens slash mermaids in the med, lights menacing lighthouses, and that sounds terrifying as fuck, and more reasonable things like St. Elmo's fire and milky water, which is just physics slash biology at work. I also have some more stories of strange things myself, but they aren't really scary, just strange. On a side note, for a time I was also considering that we saw a real ship adrift and abandoned, however, these don't move swiftly and straight like they are propelled by engines and obviously give of radar signatures and are affected by waves slash affect them. Furthermore they don't sound horns. I've worked in mental health units as security before and while most aboriginals are drug fuck primitives or schizos you hear occasional lucid threats or rambles, I remember one saying in a fit of rage they don't know what we got in the swamp, there's a lot of wetlands here, and another talking me in complete sobriety after a lengthy episodic burst of nonsense about his mob knowing the secret to the shark dream. This continent is ancient and I think these people despite being complete degenerates and a failed race have made contact with preternatural entities throughout time. A psych I know once went on a retreat by herself down south in ancient woodlands and heard beautiful singing but resisted the urge to follow it deeper into the woods, turns out local lore of the area from her liaison with abos and park ranger security say people have gone missing never to be found with reported similar phenomena, abos pretty much said it's a good thing she didn't follow the singing. Sometimes I think fey-like beings made it to this land as well or animus nature spirits. I'm inclined to think similarly, Anon. There's a practice in Aboriginal communities, at least before Europeans went over, where abos had to sink to the land, otherwise the land would grow hostile. Every piece of land had its own song, and if you learned this song you had control over the land and the things that existed. These songs were passed on as inheritances. Similarly, Europeans who encountered abos early on said that they were taught songs that allowed them to navigate certain regions without getting lost. When you take into account the Dreamtime creation story and compare it to the tradition of the Mexican Nahuales, you'll see a striking similarity. These Nahuales claim to be able to effect very specific changes in waking life through learning the appropriate dreams. Spooky stuff. Be me working as a guard in a loony bin. Walking by a shower. Hear someone inside mumble something. Pound on the giant metal door. Hey man, gotta get out had the shower key and had the door open within a few seconds. Nobody inside. I step in to search the shower. Lights are off so I have nothing but the dim light from outside the shower and my flashlight. Hear someone right next to me mumble. Nope. Step out, slam the giant steel door. Hear the water turn on inside. Could not have been the door slamming. To turn the shower on you have to mash a button and hold it for a few seconds. 
I just walked away. Shit like that was so common, I barely reacted to it. Walking downstairs. The building I'm in houses tons of very bad people. Building is built like a maze of barred doors with large caged off rooms for inmates to work out or watch TV. The IRL Michael Myers lives in this building as an example of the type of person we kept in there. So no surprise that, when I saw a shadow figure roaming one of the caged in rooms from the stairs, I rushed down. Nobody was supposed to be out. I got through the maze of doors and ran to the room to where I could look inside. I saw what looked like a humanoid made of TV static, he quickly dissolved from his head to his feet. What? Nobody saw it but me. But several other people reported the same sort of thing. I mentioned in real life Michael Myers. Name was Tyler. Was in prison for murder, multiple people. Went full schizo in prison. Sent to my facility. Basically the dumpster for prisons across my state for anyone deemed insane or high risk with major mental issues. Tyler had episodes where he forced prison guards and inmates to fight him together. He, allegedly, took on 8 guards and 12 inmates at one point. They tried killing him but didn't finish the job. Guards had to keep him safe after someone though whomped him in the head with a 40mm. Tyler was deemed insane after eating his cellie's face off. Tyler thought he was a vampire or a werewolf depending on the day. He was 6 foot 6 inches. 300 pounds. And one day he got loose. Stupid trainee let him out of a shower. I came around a corner. Tyler is standing there naked. A, hey, Tyler. On the wall man. Let's go home. I'm free, Tyler. It's Officer Orion. Look at me man. He won't look at me. Fuck. Stupid trainee is screaming into the radio that an inmate is loose, we required backup. Tyler hears the radio. They will have to kill me. But they don't have the silver. A, hey, nobody has to. Tyler bolts down the hall and down the stairs. Punches a glass wall of reinforced riot proof glass. Cracks it. His hand is fine. I go down to him. Tyler, listen to me. The sun's up. You need to get home. I don't care about the sun. I thought you were a vampire. I am. You better get home. He agrees. I gave him his attention. He literally lets himself into his own cell. Then looks me dead in the face and says. I was going to eat you. He then proceeded to howl like a wolf for 5 hours. And was angry I tricked him. I hope you get paid well. $19 per hour. 12 hour shifts. 4 days off a week. Then they fucked all that up and wanted me working 6 days a week, 1 day off, because so many people quit due to being forced to do dangerous stuff but were too stupid to say no. Why I quit? Inmate Whalen was chimping out after I told him he had to cut his recreation time short, due to low staff. It was me. Alone. With 64 lunatics, half of them out of their cells. Whalen and I got into it. Never had an issue with him. No idea why he's so angry. Had been cool doing well for months. Had him in a doorway, both of us arguing. He's making threats and I'm telling him to chill out or get gas then whooped by the 8 other dudes I was about to call, a riot team. My partner comes back to help me get him under control but has to leave right after. Whalen calms down as soon as my partner gets back and separates us. My partner was also fucking massive. Later Whalen begins apologizing to me. I talk to him. We agree to let things slide. But I find it weird. He said one thing I didn't understand. I don't know why I'd do something bad to you. You was always cool with me. I'm sorry. We just had an argument. We had arguments in the past. This was nothing new. He was good for a while but he and I had gotten into it many times when I was new. Fast forward to next week. Whalen attempts to kill my friend. Administration told my friend he had to let Whalen out and not handcuff him. Whalen produced a shank and slashed at my buddy's throat. He had been planning this. Four. Months. To kill a guard so he would be sent back to regular prison. He was going to do that to me. Not a security guard, but I'm a US Marine so security is something that we do a lot of. Stationed on Okinawa, mid-2017. On Kadena Air Force Base. Waiting for a flight to mainland Japan to do some more training. Flight window was supposed to be for 12 hours, but there was a storm offshore that ended up getting our flight delayed by like a day. There's a building that is kinda like an airport, but it closes after a certain time. Airmen aren't happy that a bunch of dirty, and soaking, marines are in their airport and tell us we have to leave when they close. Closing time for the airport. Our chain of command sucked and didn't find an empty building for us, 
So we end up sleeping in a grass field right outside of the airport. It's raining. Eventually some officer, colonel or something I don't remember, sees us sleeping on the grass and tells our command that we can sleep inside the base theater if we post two guards at certain gate. Command agrees. I'm new to my unit at this time, so I have a shift at 2 to 3 a.m. Get woken up at 1.45 a.m. by the guys on shift. Fuck my life. JPG. Me and one of my best friends, another Lance Corporal get up and walk to the gate. Gate is by the edge of the airfield, and has one street lamp right above it. Me, my friend and the guy that woke us up all walk up to the gate guard. Hey what's up man? Looks really pale. Hey Lance Corporal Anon, what's good? This guard was a brand new guy, and was never really nervous when our NCOs would fuck with him, so seeing him like this was kind of unnerving. Before either of us could ask what was wrong, the guy who woke us up asked. Did you hear it again? Yeah man, it seems a lot closer than it did last time. Ask what the fuck was going on. I don't know man, there's been a lot of rustling in the bushes around and we kept hearing voices on our shift. Okinawa is a tropical island so the entire place is a jungle. There's no trees by the airfield or the gate, but the grass is very thick and about 6 feet high. We've seen animals before during other training like big cats and flying foxes but usually they get scared of a human with a rifle and leave us alone but that shit is still scary. The guard had been there alone while his buddy woke me and my friend up, so I assumed that he had just kind of got skeeved out being alone. Anyways, the other guys tell us good luck and leave to go back to the theater. My friend and I kind of joke around about it because seeing that guy nervous was really weird. We quickly get bored and shoot the shit about various porn stars we think are good. Dylan Harper is my favorite, even though her tits look connected, so we call her frog tits. While talking about her, we heard some scurrying in the bush about 10 feet in front of us. We both go silent and expect to see something. We aim our rifles, we have no ammo, down the street and turn on our lights. We can see that about 5 feet off to the right of the road, the tall grass is shaking like there's a tall figure moving through it. Normally if it were a cat, the rusting wouldn't be as vigorous at the top so we figure it must be something kinda tall. My friend and I look at each other then back towards the bush. Hey you fucking gook, get out of those bushes and come here. My friend yells. It doesn't respond. A second later, it bolts off further into the woods and down the road. We think it's weird but whatever. At 2.35 am my friend decides to walk down to the theater and wake up the next guys to relieve us. I don't want to be alone. But I let him so we can both go back asleep. He leaves. I start getting pretty tired and I can feel my head bobbing as I drift in and out of sleep. As I start to shut my eyes, I hear the rustling about 6 feet away from me. I'm ready to shit myself. I turn on my light and point it off the road to the right. There's something walking pretty fast out there, but the grass is too thick to see what it is. I can see the bushes moving towards the road, I'm starting to brace myself to see something. All of a sudden, I see the outline of creature stick its head out and look at my direction. I train my light on it as it jumps forward onto the road. It's a fucking marine in World War II combat gear. Pick related. His camis are caked in mud, his face is blackened and he's holding an M1 carbine. Can't fucking believe it what I'm looking at. There are holes in his uniform that look like he had been shot through. But there wasn't any blood. The guy looks my way, then crosses the road and I can see the bushes start moving again. After a few minutes, I can start to hear footsteps behind me but I'm too afraid to look. Hear my friend's voice, along with two other guys. Relieved that I'm leaving. Must have looked really nervous because my friend asked if I heard anything again. Nodded yes, and just left with my friend. Didn't say anything to him until after we left Okinawa when he joked around that I looked so weird a few weeks later. This was the second time I had seen something at Kadena Air Force Base, but definitely the worst. I haven't been to Okinawa since and I'm out now. I think about that moment from time to time and wonder if I really did see that. It did not seem angry or like it wanted to hurt me or anything. I eventually read up on ghost stories from Okinawa, and there were quite a few articles talking about airmen who had seen other marines in World War II and higher around that gate as well. Get security job at old school that's closed, pretty small school. Been used for everything from a house, to a clinic, to a hospital during both wars, to a school until it was closed. Totally quiet and pretty affluent place, but the owners don't want anyone to break in and destroy slash steal things. Speak with a few guards who worked there and they said they wouldn't go back because of spoopy shenanigans. Pussies. During the day there's only one guard and at night they have three. Only need to check perimeter and keep people away, 
don't need to enter the school anymore because of the last guards shitting themselves. Work during nice summer day. Pass boiler room and see a piece of wood has been pulled off. It's a tight squeeze, like a 9 to 10 gap. Can't replace it in case someone is inside and I lock them in. Get through it, just. End up in bathroom. Shout hello. No response. Start looking around. Broad daylight and no shutters on the windows so it's not even dark. Go upstairs. Second from last classroom door is closed. Check classes and no one in them. Go in closed door class. No one there. Turn back around and glimpse someone run past door to last classroom. I've been tricked. Go to last room. No one there. Turn around and class I was in before has the door closed again. Go in. No one there. Fuck this. Start heading to bathroom. Hear a bang somewhere behind me. Not even going to investigate. Get to bathroom and hear really heavy footsteps running down corridor to bathroom. Na senpai. Try to squeeze my way through gap but in my panic get stuck. Hear bathroom door slam open against the wall. Force my way through and cut myself. Turn back around and look inside. Bathroom door is open, but there's no one there just pure silence. Replace wid. Sit in comfy cabin with the door locked. Following day I get asked to go in a separate building the teachers used, like a staff room, because the skylight has been broken and someone might have entered. Go in. Nothing out of order. See literally tens of thousands of stacks of paper, strewn all over the floor, on the desk, everywhere, in the same room slash cupboard the skylight is in. They're all reports from the last few years from security who detailed what they'd experienced and why they won't be returning. Really tempted to take them because they could be interesting to read properly. Don't drive there because it's not that far from where I live. Decide the following day I should drive to work and put them in my car to take home. Lock things up and tell them they'll need someone out to cover the skylight. Next day I drive there. Guards still there from night shift. Tell me that last night the building caught fire, the one with the papers in, not the main school. Ask them how. Don't know. Structurally unsafe anyway and has to be torn down so the owners are fucking furious. Get full arson investigation. Never determine how the fire started.